My name is Jennifer Lippincott Schwartz, and I work at the National Institutes of Health. Today, I'd like to talk about uh, the role of lipids and cholesterol in the regulation of trafficking across the secretory pathway. Now, lipids are a major component of the secretory pathway, so it's important to try to understand uh, what roles they play, other than just a, as a conveyor of um, or a, a, a constituent of the bilayer that comprises this system. Before I get into uh, describing what the roles of these lipids might be in regulating the secretory pathway, let me first give you a perspective uh, of this system. The secretory pathway is characteristic of all eukaryotic cells and is comprised of three major compartments, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi, and the plasma membrane, as well as transport intermediates that uh, uh, flow between these different organelles. Newly synthesized proteins that enter the secretory pathway do so at the level of the endoplasmic reticulum, where they get processed and folded. They're then transported to the Golgi apparatus through small vesicular tubular carriers uh, into the Golgi apparatus, where they then meet up with uh, a variety of different enzymes that can process these proteins. And ultimately, the proteins then move into a different set of carriers that ferry them to the plasma membrane or to other final destinations within the cell. Now, traditionally, people who have studied this, this very uh, dynamic system have focused on the role of protein-based machiner machinery in regulating the trafficking between these different compartments. And, uh, important roles for coat proteins, small GTPases, tethering factors, and fusion proteins have all been found to play important roles in this uh, process by which molecules move from one place to another uh, within the system. And this movie is just showing you an example of this dynamic movement where uh, transport intermediates are forming off the surface of the ER and uh, targeting uh, to the Golgi apparatus found in this center, center region here uh, through this uh, very complex protein-based machinery. Now, less understood is the roles of lipids in this process. I mean, clearly lipids are important because they form the bilayer into which uh, proteins uh, are conveyed within this secretory system. But do lipids help orchestrate other features of this system? Are they regulating, in a more fundamental way, the way that the uh, membranes are organized and proteins are flowing within this system? That's the question uh, that uh, I think is very, very interesting. Now, there are three major classes of lipids that comprise the secretory pathway. These include glycerophospholipids, sphingolipids, and cholesterol. And these three lipids have very different characteristics. Uh, when they uh, exist within the bilayer. The glycerophospholipids have uh, fatty acid tails that are uh, essentially, that are, um, uh, have a lot of uh, essentially unsaturated characters, which makes them uh, flexible when they sit in a bilayer. And as a result, the thickness of that bilayer is relatively thin relative to bilayers that are enriched in sphingolipids, which have um, longer and um, as more saturated uh, fatty acids associated with them. Now, in the presence of cholesterol, which is a flat four carbon chained uh, sterile molecule, the sphingolipids will become much more tightly packed and as a result create a thicker bilayer relative to bilayers that are enriched in the glycerophospholipids. Now, one of the things that's interesting is that when you uh, rec recombine these different lipids in, a, in uh, artificial vesicles, you can see uh, essentially segregation of these lipids into different uh, microdomains, with cholesterol and sphingolipids essentially coalescing into discrete micro microdomains relative to the uh, phosphoglycerol, uh, the um, glycerophospholipids, which distribute more uniformly. Uh, within these vesicles. Now, interestingly, there is a, uh, it's known 
that there's a gradient of lipid composition of these three classes of lipids across the secretory pathway. Um, the ER is, pr is primarily enriched in glycerophospholipids, uh, and that is in contrast, in striking contact, contrast to the plasma membrane, which is enriched in sphingolipids and sterols. The Golgi apparatus has a mixed uh, richness, um, so it's got an intermediate uh, com uh, composition uh, uh, between plasma membrane and ER-like uh, lipid. Now, this gradient of uh, composition of these lipids across the, the, secret the secretory pathway um, presumably plays an important role in the discrete functions of these organelles within this system. So the ER is shown here, which is a deplete, which is primarily enriched in these glycerophospholipids, um, has lipids, therefore, that are loosely packed and deform, deform, deformable, which makes them suitable for insertion and folding of proteins, uh, which is the primary function of the endoplasmic reticulum vis-a-vis -vis the secretory pathway. The plasma membrane, by contrast, as I, is enriched in sphingolipids and cholesterol. This makes this bilayer thicker and less permeable to small molecules, uh, which provides an impermeable barrier uh, to the outside and also allows the plasma membrane to be moved and manipulated by uh, the cytoskeleton, as shown here, uh, uh, where you're looking at the uh, interaction of the actin cytoskeleton with the plasma membrane at the cell's leading edge. Now, the Golgi apparatus is intermediate in concentration between these different um, uh, phospholipids um, and, uh, and cholesterol. And uh, its function within the secretory pathway could potentially be uh, optimized as a, as a result of that uh, mixed concentration because it's situated between the ER and the plasma membrane and is essentially where sorting decisions are made as to whether proteins uh, essentially leave the ER Golgi system or move onto the plasma membrane. So one of the big questions in the field is how this lipid gradient across the secretory pathway is generated and maintained. I just emphasized how uh, the, this lipid gradient could play a very important role in the functions of these different organelles. So how this gradient is maintained and generated uh, is an important question. Now, we know that cholesterol is synthesized in the ER, but is shipped very efficiently out to the Golgi apparatus and onto the plasma membrane. What explains this? We don't know. One possibility is that proteins uh, essentially can uh, partition with cholesterol and help drive that molecule into the Golgi apparatus, which is where the sphingolipids are uh, preferentially synthesized. The cholesterol and sphingolipids could then potentially uh, partition with each other to drive the movement of that uh, population of molecules onto the plasma membrane. But there are complexities to this system. For instance, cholesterol is capable of coming out of the bilayer altogether and associate with lipid tra transfer proteins, which are cytosolic proteins that can potentially deliver cholesterol throughout this system. So it's not clear how cholesterol uh, really could be regulated in this system uh, to drive these different um, partitioning events if it also has this dynamic component where it can exchange within the cytoplasm. So we need to try to understand how all of these lipids are behaving within the system, which is going to require our ability to have better lipid probes to monitor uh, these lipids as they're fluxing and distributing within this system, as well as uh, visualizing the, the composition of these different organelles vis-a-vis -vis lipids and the proteins that are distributed with them. Now, another question um, that relates to what I've just mentioned uh, with regards to that lipid gradient is whether that gradient itself is playing a role in protein sorting and trafficking within the secretory pathway. And the reason for thinking about this is that transmembrane proteins favor being in a lipid environment that matches the length of their transmembrane domain. So proteins that have long transmembrane domains will tend to uh, 
want to reside in a lipid environment that's enriched in single lipids and cholesterol, whereas a protein with a short transmembrane domain will prefer to be in an environment uh, enriched in these glycerol phospholipids. So that's led many to hypothesize that the way proteins actually distribute within the secretory pathway is, is through their moving and partitioning to particular lipid environments that fit uh, their transmembrane domain. And consistent with that, researchers have shown that by modifying the length of the transmembrane domain of a protein, you can shift its distribution uh, within the secretory pathway. Now, a third question relates to whether this partitioning of the lipids within this system um, uh, can be integrated with protein machinery to play a key role in the way that the secretory pathway is actually acting to sort and traffic protein. And here is a incredibly, I think, the mo probably the most profound question of all. Um, we know a lot about this protein machinery that's driving secretory trafficking, but we don't know how that machinery is actually uh, influenced by this, these lipid gradients that I've just mentioned and how that lipid, that protein machinery um, can, its, can itself potentially impact the lipid partitioning and the segregation of these lipids uh, across this secretory pathway in order to allow uh, this system to really operate in a robust fashion where newly synthesized proteins can very efficiently move through this system out to the plasma membrane. So with that, I want to thank you.